Like many outdoor activities over the summer, fishing has taken a bit of a bashing. This is Buell Water, one of the southeast's biggest reservoirs. We were here in April, filming the restocking in the sun with a hosepipe ban in place. Now look at it. The hosepipe ban has gone, and so sadly have the fishermen. But the fisheries manager here has decided to open the floodgates and allow any method fishing. Well, within reason. With the diminishing number of fishermen that we're seeing, um, we, to put it bluntly, are trying to get more bums on seats. Um, so we have opened up the fishing from purely fly fishing to any method, um, which will include spinning, worm fishing, uh, maggots, uh, soft pellets. Um, so it's, it's opening it up to a lot more people, basically. Today, sporting shooter editor Dom Holtham, without Bo, and the housewife's choice Andy Crow are heading off for a morning's fishing. Crow and Dom are keen fishermen, but today Crow is going to keep to traditional fly fishing, and Dom is going off-piste and is spinning. But which is better? I'll do a bit of trout fishing, but this man here reckons he's going to beat me today. He's going to go for the spinning technique. I'm going to go for the fly. Uh, well, hopefully I'll whip his uh, backside, as they say. So, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Dominic, how are you feeling? Uh, well, actually, that's not quite. What he says is not quite true. I, I have a theory that a talented fly fisherman is oh. going to still get superior results to an idiot using any method. Me. Um, so people just assume that you use a spinner, you're going to catch more fish than if you're using the fly. So we're going to try the two different techniques today, and, and hopefully find a scientific result for you. While they set sail for a man-off, we are going to concentrate on catching a pike with expert rod Rob Dixon. The pressure is on as he caught this 26 and a half pounder last week. Well, it's an exciting fish, you know, you, you just don't know how, how big, you know, they go. Um, they're sort of a fish of myth and legend and folklore, so I find that exciting. Um, we don't stock them, so they're a wild fish in the reservoir and they fight quite hard as well so they're good fun. I was lucky enough to catch one of 41 pound in, in the winter to, to most pike anglers that's you know the fish of their dreams and I've had quite a few over 20 on the lures as well um, and days where you've had a lot of medium-sized fish just a good sporting day um, it's about, about as much as you can ask for really. The high water levels mean that a lot of the fry are hiding in the margins, and that is where Rob is concentrating his efforts to start with. With no nibbles, we move across to another possible hot spot. Rob is having no luck in the shallow water, so starts casting into the deeper stuff. And hey presto, we strike pike. I had to take and follow, and I put on a smaller lure, expecting it to be a perch, and I think I've got a little pike. That's quite a nice pike, it's just not fighting very hard. What sort of size would you reckon? It's about six pounds, it's quite fat, or she. I wasn't going to get it off very easily. Yeah, it's good condition, got a few uh, fish lice on it. It's a tiddler by Rob and Buell's standards, but it's an impressive fish all the same. Let's see if there's another one now. Good old Beltic, old fashioned spinner. A fly fisherman can travel quite light, but a pike fisherman is likely to get hit with excess baggage. Look at this lot. Some of the tools of the trade look big enough to catch a whale. Rob talks lures. There's ones that look like frogs. This is just uh, got a little propeller on the back and wiggles along the top. It looks like a swimming mouse. This one again has got a big propeller. They all fish right in the surface when the pike are, are really up. And these are the bigger spinners, bigger version of what we're using today. This is normally what you'd be catching them on this time of year. Fish very quickly, as far as, as fast as you can wind it in, they'll be chasing them. 
So why aren't we using those then, Rob? Because the water's not warming up and the pike just aren't behaving like that yet. I'd give, give one a go if, it, if I was getting action, but we're just trying to find the pike that are feeding at the moment. Of course, big pike and young bite-sized trout are not a particularly healthy mix. And back in the 1980s, gill netting pulled out about 10 tonnes of pike over a couple of winters. But these days, pike fishing is a sport in its own right. That's about, um, I'd say, seven, maybe eight pound. It's probably going to bite me now. Are you able to bring it out for me or not? I'll hold it over the water in case it... There we are. He didn't uh, like the camera. Time to catch up with Dom and Andy. And it looks as if there's a fish supper on the cards for one of them. The scientific experiment has been quite conclusive so far with, with a proviso. Um, definitely been more action on the spinners than there has on the fly but Andy's excuse is that we are fishing places where we are less likely to catch trout so what, what, once we finish this drift we're going to uh, we're going to shift and go you know pretend that I'm not fishing at all and go and fish places where Andy's confident he can catch on the fly so he's hoping for a reversal of fortune in the afternoon um, but he's not happy. No I've had a good day it but the thing is, I've been fishing with Dom, he's a bit of a competition, he doesn't like losing, so he pucked us up under some bushes and there's about six inches of water and the old trout ain't in that six inches, that's where all the, all the coarse fish are, so he, that's why he's beat me, but it will be changing in a minute, we're going around the cages and I expect I'll whip his backside, that's what I intend to do anyway. So. About the same size. Buell, like other businesses, is having to adapt to the economic climate, but any method is broadening horizons and delivering some exciting and impressive fish. This is Dom's catch of the day, which was definitely in the mid-teens. Of course, Andy was very pleased for him. 